Scaling in Elden Ring can mislead you into thinking that if a weapon can't reach A or S tier scaling then it's bad. Or that a weapon with a higher scaling grade will always deal more damage than a weapon with a lower scaling grade. Or that a weapon with multiple scaling attributes is always defined by the attribute it has the highest scaling grade in. And the build you then use that weapon with needs to always be based on that attribute. All of these notions are not true and are common misconceptions and in this video I'm going to show you exactly why and talk about scaling and weapons. You might be dealing a lot less damage than you are capable of in your playthrough and thus are not reaching your true potential with your build and who wants to play a scuffed build, let's be honest. But before we continue I want to give a shout out to today's sponsor Conflict of Nations. Conflict of Nations is a free online PvP strategy game where you can choose a real country to lead in a modern global warfare. You can fight up to 128 other players real time in games that can take weeks to complete. And for this you can use many different units to build your army. Think of tanks, jets and even nuclear submarines. Whether you want to declare war on your neighbors or forge alliances with other players is up to you. You can choose your own strategy and engage in epic battles and take over the world. What I personally like the most about conflict of nations is in fact its long-term strategy there is a lot of depth to this game and every move you make will have long-term effects and the best thing is that you can play conflict of nations with the same account on both pc and mobile and if you click my link in the description you get an exclusive gift because you will get 13,000 gold and one month of a premium subscription for free this offer is available for 30 days so don't wait too long now let's get back into the video and I'm going to start off with an example. Take the Warhawk Stellum weapon for example that you get from farming those annoying ass birds in Stormvale. And compare it with the broadsword that you can buy from a merchant and it's considered to be one of the best strength based straight swords in the game. Now the broadsword has a C tier scaling in strength and a D tier scaling in dexterity while the Warhawk Stellan has a D tier scaling in strength and a B tier scaling in dexterity. And this would imply that the broadsword is a weapon that you will want to use in builds that mostly focus on strength while the Warhawk Stellan is a weapon that you will want to use in builds that focus on dexterity, right? Right? But let's say we are running a dexterity build and go all the way till we reach the last soft cap of dexterity which is at level 80 and then give both weapons the keen affinity which will make both these weapons scale even more with dexterity. Now both weapons have the keen affinity and the Warhawk Stellan has gotten a 8 tier scaling while the broadsword has gotten a B tier scaling in dexterity at plus 25. So both weapons are maximum upgraded to plus 25 and have the same affinity. And if we go back to the common misconceptions I started the video with then the Warhawk Stellan should deal more damage right? Well no that's not true as you can see. The broadsword has a higher AR which stands for attack rating and thus it will deal more damage per hit. So not only does the weapon we originally thought to be a strength weapon with a lower tier scaling in dexterity, even when upgraded to max, out damage the dexterity focused weapon with the better scaling, but it also would be the better fit for a dexterity based build. That's crazy right? Another example and this time let's compare two weapons with the same scaling primary attribute, namely strength in this case. Take the normal greatsword or also known as the guts greatsword and the watchdogs greatsword. Both have a C tier in strength and E tier in dexterity. So both are exactly the same from the moment you pick them up in terms of attributes and they are both weapons you'll probably want to use in a strength build. Now when you give both of these swords the heavy affinity for a strength build and upgrade them to max then the normal greatsword gets A in scaling while the watchdogs greatsword gets a S in scaling for strength. Then let's assume we invest points as much into strength as you always would want with a two-handed strength build which is in this case 54 because that is the soft cap. Again you would think the S tier scaling weapon is going to out damage the one with A tier scaling right? No. What? The normal greatsword with A tier scaling does in fact out damage the watchdog's greatsword with S tier scaling. What makes this even more crazy is that the Watchdog's Greatsword is supposedly one of the rarest weapons in the game. But as you can see, it gets out damaged by the Greatsword, a weapon that you can pretty much pick up at the very start of the game. Another example is the Hand of Melania with EB Strength Dexterity Scaling that will out damage a Keen Uchi Katana with EA Strength Dexterity Scaling given if he would max both weapons and invest points into the relevant stats to meet the soft cap. 
you will see that yet again the lower tier scaling weapon the hand of melania will have a higher attack rating than the uchi katana with the higher scaling value and there are many other examples to be made but i think you get the point by now as you can see scaling is not everything and the reason why we see all of this is because of the base damage stat of a weapon that is specific for that weapon and also different for every weapon and that is the second part of the equation for determining a weapon's AR. The base damage of a weapon is a very important thing to consider because next to having its own value it also affects the other value the value that is determined by your stat investment and the scaling grades on the weapon. So in conclusion, the base damage stat of a weapon is a very important thing to consider and is the reason why all the weapons I showed you out damage the weapons with a higher tier scaling. Which if you believed in the misconceptions I started the video with, you would have thought that would never be possible, right? And what's even crazier is that the base damage set of a weapon makes it possible to have a weapon with its secondary scaling attribute to out damage a weapon where that same attribute is the primary scaling attribute which is what I showed you in the first example. Now for the other misconception that exists in the fact that thinking that a weapon that can't reach A or S tier scaling then it's just simply bad, well that one is the easiest to debunk. Think about Rivers of Blood, Moon Veil, Bloodhounds, Fang, Sword of Night and Flame, etc, etc. None of these ever even reach A tier scaling, let alone S tier scaling, but they are all very powerful meta weapons. That's because outside of scaling and base damage there are still the movesets you want to consider, the Ash of War that can be super powerful and other unique characteristics that belong to those types of weapons. So now that we have debunked the three common misconceptions, let's go a bit deeper into scaling and the best way to spend your points to get the most out of your build. Scaling is a very overrated mechanism in a certain sense, especially if you use it as the be all and end all. To really show you this, here are the scaling modifying numbers for every grade. Basically the letters serve more as a representation of which bracket your scaling is in rather than a definitive value. And let's take a weapon that has a B tier scaling for example. That weapon can have a scaling value of around 90, closer to C tier, or all the way around 139, closer to A tier scaling. But in both cases it will still appear as a B tier scaling weapon when you take a look at the attributes of that weapon in your game. Even though the difference for your damage output would be huge, it's the same thing with the two weapons I showed you earlier. The Hand of Melania is in the B category, but it's very high in the B range at 135, while the Keen Uchi Katana is in A tier scaling, but it's pretty much all the way near the bottom at 142. And because of the Hand of Melania's higher base damage, it blows the Uchi Katana out of the water in terms of attack rating. So from that perspective, the letters you see on your weapons are very ambiguous to make definitive conclusions about and in many cases you should really interpret them with a grain of salt and in a similar fashion upgrading your weapon and bringing it from let's say C tier scaling to B tier scaling or B tier to A tier scaling can in reality just mean only a difference of a few points and does not be an impressive upgrade at all for your damage output. As you can see there is a lot of nuance to how to interpret the attributes and numbers on your weapons. And this means that getting the most out of your weapons that have multiple scaling attributes can be a bit of a puzzle sometimes. Let me give you an example and we'll use the Moon Veil weapon as it's a pretty well known weapon and it scales with three different attributes and two of those become the same tier letter when fully upgraded. Now Dexterity and Intelligence both get a B tier grade when you fully upgrade these weapons and you can test around a lot of options but ultimately for weapon damage you'll find that the best distribution is when you don't go all out on either Dexterity or Intelligence and also not by focusing too much on either of these two stats but by leaning slightly more towards intelligence. Getting 50 intelligence and then around 40 dexterity will be the best ratio. This is obviously assuming you cap yourself in stats for testing build viability or PvP or anything really. If you do it the other way around and lean more towards dexterity instead of intelligence, you will see that your AR will be lower in fact. This might still be a very weird notion considering they both have a B great in scaling right but as i showed you there is a rather significant range in the scaling value for a certain letter and intelligence does in fact have the higher value for the moon veil when you compare it to dexterity add to that that the soft cap for intelligence for weapon damage is at 50 so that's very crucial for when you consider both attributes and for getting that sweet spot 
to maximize your damage while at the same time not neglecting dexterity and all the other stats you will want to get some points in. Soft caps are another thing you want to consider for this but I already covered that in a different video which could have been a video on its own but I mix it together with a bunch of other tips and tricks just to make it even better and spicier so just watch that video if you haven't yet to learn more about soft caps. I also want to talk a bit about arcane because I feel like this stat at times can be a bit confusing. Arcane affects the bleed status effect and makes it proc faster for you if you have a higher arcane level. But only if the bleed weapon, staff or seal that you have has arcane scaling as well. If a weapon has the ability to build a blood loss but it has no arcane scaling on it whatsoever then no matter how many points you spend on arcane it won't affect the bleed status effect of that weapon. Furthermore, arcane only affects the buildup of bleed, manas and poison, so it's not relevant for other status effects like frost, scarlet rot or death bite. I'm saying this because the dragon communion seal recently got a nerf to its status effect buildup and many people, at least from what I saw in my comments, thought it affects its buildup for powerful incantations that can apply scarlet rot and frostbite on enemies. This is not true however, that change only affected the status effect build up that are linked to arcane which is really not a big deal as this is pretty much equal to just saying swarm of flies for pve which got nerfed on its own already and then the frenzied spells for pvp which also got nerfed on their own dragon communion seal is still easily the best seal in the game and i went over the why in my fate build video so check that out if you want to know more about that now to conclude things, when you want to compare the real power of different weapons, you want to take the scaling grades on weapons with a grain of salt and rather use scaling as an indicator for how you want to invest your points. Add to that that when you compare weapons, make sure to look at their attack rating instead, but also consider the range of the weapon's attacks, the weapon's attack speed, moveset and Ash of War. And finally, when you want to invest your points optimally for a weapon with multiple scaling attributes, try to experiment with various stat distributions to find the highest damage output for your weapons because it definitely can be a significant difference for your damage output. Thank you for watching, like and subscribe if you liked the video. Don't forget to do that because a lot of you guys are still not subscribed to me for some reason. So hit that beep button and hit the bell thing as well so you always get notified as early as possible. And finally, let me know your thoughts in the comments. And don't forget to check out Conflict of Nations, the free online PvP strategy game happening in a modern global warfare where you can choose your own strategy, engage in epic battles and take over the world. Click on the link in the description to get 13,000 gold and one month of premium subscription for free. Again, the offer is only available for 30 days.